Hi, my name is Colin McNaughton. I'm a technical marketing manager for the Ansible automation platform here at Red Hat. And today I wanted to talk about GitOps using event-driven automation. Now this is pretty easy from my Git provider here because Giddy already has webhook functionality that I can listen to events from. So I'm gonna first go into my project repository settings and configure a new webhook. Now I'm gonna add this webhook and point it at a host that I call Ansible events, which is just running this endpoint on this port, uh, waiting for events to come through. So we're going to use the HTTP POST method. And instead of listening for all events, we're just going to send uh, some events. So let's send push events and events for pull requests. And now I don't want to respond on all push events to any branch. I just want to respond to it on main, on the main branch here. We'll add the webhook. Okay, so the webhook has been added. You can see the endpoint here. Let's click on it and run a test delivery of this webhook with some, uh, some fake event data. So this is going to fail because I don't have my events host listening on this endpoint yet, but we can get a good understanding of what sort of data we can use uh, within event-driven Ansible from this event type. So first, you can see the headers delivered here. This is where we'll find our, our event type. So you can see X giddy event is push. Um, so we know that this was a push event. And then down within the, the payload content, you can see exactly what events sort of triggered this, uh, this push. You can see the different repositories that we've pushed to, uh, the commit numbers and hashes and things like that. Um, so that's great. Now this is all data that we can reuse within playbooks or reuse within Ansible rulebook itself to respond to these events. Uh, now that we have our project repository sending these events out, let's take a look at actually receiving and acting upon these events. Okay, so now that the project repository is set up to send events on push and pull request, now we need event-driven Ansible and Ansible rulebook to actually listen for those events and then act on them. So let's take a look at the sample rulebook that I have created here. This is how we're going to initiate that webhook and listen for these events. And you can see that I'm using the webhook uh, source plugin from the Ansible EDA collection. I'm listening on port 5000 and I'm listening, I'm allowing all addresses to, uh, to post events here. I'm also using a filter called dashes to underscores. And this just allows me to pull out those headers that we reviewed uh, from, the, from the payload that is sent from Giddy from my project repository. Now from there, my only condition is that event payload is defined. Uh, this means that we've received the event, it has a payload, and then our action is to just drop it, just debug that event and, uh, and see what came through. I also has an, have an inventory file here. It just contains local host and then some app node that I'm going to be using in a later example. So let's go over to my event-driven Ansible tab and run Ansible rulebook against that webhook rulebook. Okay, so I've run this, I've started this with verbosity, so we'll see some info debug messages come through. Let's go back to Giddy and try running that, uh, that test event again. Settings, webhooks, there's my endpoint that I've already configured. I'll scroll down and I'll run the test delivery. All right, there it is. So going back to the EDA tab, you can see that it received the event immediately. Um, the event.payload was defined, and so it printed out the event payload. It just dropped all of that information using the debug action. Okay, so now we see that event-driven Ansible and Ansible rulebook has created that webhook, and it's waiting for those events from my, my project repository. Let's try to act on, these, on these, this event data coming through and trigger some more meaningful automation. Okay, so to actually act on event data coming from our project repository, I've gone ahead and modified my webhook um, rulebook here for event-driven Ansible. So you can see a, a few different things added here. I added an additional filter, which will exclude some JSON keys coming from the event payload that I don't really need. I'm not acting on these, so I might as well just trash them. Um, and now I have some additional rules. Instead of running just debug, I'm running a couple of different things here. So on a condition of uh, you know, a push event coming from my project repository, uh, you can see that I'm using the event he meta headers x giddy event equals push. That's how I'm identifying that it's actually a push event, right? 
Um, so based on that condition, I'm going to run an action called post events where I'm just sort of setting facts. So if you're familiar with Ansible, you know, set facts or set stats. Um, I'm creating some new variables here that uh, are a lot easier to type than event.payload.ref or things like that. So more friendly variable names. I'm taking the, that data and passing it on to the next action. Um, in the in the condition for the next rule, I'm already using these these variables. So first, I'm checking that the repo name is EDA app. That's my repository on Giddy, and the event type should be push. And once again, you can see that I'm using the more friendly variable instead of typing out event meta headers x giddy event equals push. Right? This makes it a lot easier. Now, my action this time is to run a playbook, and the playbook is uh, local in the playbooks directory called on push because it's a push event. Um, post events here just means that if I set any facts within this playbook, then to pass those facts on uh, to the the subsequent rule or subsequent action. Um, and that's similar to what I've done up here. Now that playbook, um, it's pretty simple. All it's doing is cloning the project repository based on the, uh, the, the version that is pushed to my main branch. All right, so let's run this and see what happens. Let's go back over to the EDA tab. Actually, let's take a look at my application tab first. There's no application deployed. Um, if I go over to Giddy, you can see, start to see kind of some of this application that is going to be deployed. Now, the application itself is just a Flask application running within a Docker, uh, Docker container. My playbook I have here in my project repository actually uh, deploys this application. And there's a couple things that we can configure, um, a couple parameters for this application that we can con configure. One is the color. Um, so I'm able to just change the background color of this application. And uh, after I change it, I want that event to be pushed out. Event-driven Ansible should see that event and redeploy the application. Um, so that's really it. The application right now hasn't been deployed, and that's how that's what we expect. So let's go over to Event-driven Ansible and run Ansible rulebook again against that uh, that rulebook for my webhook. Again, I've started with verbosity, so you'll see some info messages there. Let's create an event now. Now, we're listening for push events, so let's just go ahead and edit this file for my application deployment. Change the background color from green to, let's say, ANSA blue. I really like that color. Now, I'm going to commit it directly to the main branch, which should kick off a push event. Let's go over to EDA. There it is. You can see it's already starting to pull in this event. You see it's updating the application repository. Um, to the, the main branch. It dumps out some additional debug information for me here just to just so I know that it's doing what I want it to do. And you can see it's already deployed that application. Let's go over to the application tab and check it out. There it is. So here's my simple application. It's a container deployed on Podman on a rel host. Uh, this is like a this is the uh, the name um, I'm using bridge networking, so this would be the host name, but instead of it's using this random identifier. Uh, but then you can also see some event info that it passed in here. So uh, if you squint, squint really hard, you can see app built from the main branch, which is what I expect. Now, you know, this is really cool. We are we're now receiving these events, right? I can go in and change ANSA blue to red and uh, and redeploy the application just by pushing here. But traditionally, we're probably not updating an application in production from the main branch and just automatically redeploying it. You know, typically we will first deploy these changes into a development environment instead. So let's take a look at a more realistic scenario here and uh, just verify that it redeploys the application. We can refresh this view. And there, it's red again. That's amazing. But let's look at it at a more realistic scenario. Okay, so for a more realistic scenario, we should probably be listening for pull request events as well. And as a new pull request comes in, I want my application to deploy into a development environment. So I have a new uh, app, app development environment up here now. Uh, if I refresh, you can see that the application hasn't even deployed in development yet. In production, we still have it as that red color. 
uh, from our last example here. Let's take a look at our new rule book here today that's going to help us respond to pull request events. So let's take a look at our webhook rule book. So you can see the existing, um, the existing push condition here. Now we're going to be um, filtering on a condition for pull request as that pull request is opened. Um, and similarly, I also have that on, uh, on PR playbook that is going to run down here. Um, between these two different tasks, they set up all of the environment and the variables that I need to redeploy that application, whether it's going into development or, um, or production. So let's, let's put this to use, right? Let's go over to EDA, our EDA tab, Event Driven Ansible tab here. Let's uh, run Ansible rulebook against that webhook rule set again. Okay, we see our info uh, starting to populate the screen. That looks good. Let's run over to Giddy. Now, let's run my application deployment again. Let's change this color once again. I am so sick of red, you know. I want to look at something a little bit lighter and brighter. Let's change the background color to pink. Now, this time, instead of pushing directly to main, directly into production and redeploying that application, let's create a new branch for it that we're going to create a, a, a pull request from. So I'll propose that new file change to change the, the background color from red to pink. Let's open a pull request against this and say change to pink. Uh, this is going pulling from student patch one into the main branch. So let's create that pull request. Now on that pull request event, we should see, yeah, there's Ansible rulebook already processing the event. And it looks like it's up already. So one thing that I've done within this application uh, uh, deployment playbook is to set the name of the container based on where, uh, or sorry, based on what event it's responding to. So if my automation is responding to a pull request event and we're deploying to development, I want to name that container colors-dev, and I also want to publish it on 8081. This is just like a, uh, to simulate my development environment. Instead of deploying on 8080, I'm, I'm publishing it on 8081 instead. So let's take a look at my app in dev. There it is. Look at that bright pink color. Don't you love it? Let's look at our production application. Refresh it just to make sure that it's still the background red. And it is. But you know what? I love that pink background so much that I'm ready to promote that change. So I'm going to go back to Giddy and merge this pull request. Now, as soon as I merge this pull request, it's going to kick off a push event. So let's go back to EDA. Yeah, look at that. It's already pulling in that event. It sees the push event and now it's redeploying the container uh, with the container name just colors instead of colors dash dev. So we know this is going straight to my production environment. All right, so let's look at the app in development. It's pink. We refresh it. It's still pink. That hasn't changed. Let's refresh our production application. And guess what? Yep. It's pink. So that's awesome. We've now rolled out an application first uh, into development based on our pull request to change the production or change our application. We're so happy with that change in the background color of pink that we promoted those changes directly into production. Now, all of this was generated by um, all of this was was automated by based on events that were generated by my project repository and event-driven Ansible and Ansible rulebook, which is listening for these events and then acting on them. Thank you very much.